What up? It's your boy Mizzo, Route Walla Vlogs, episode 106. I just pulled up here at Von Woodruff's Kennel in Woodruff, South Carolina. Literally just pulled up. I'm about to get out and um, get my film on with all these Route Wallers, the Dobermans. Um, his wife Tasha has a little Frenchie I'm going to get on camera and all that good stuff. So I'm real excited about being here. This is a great episode. Um, a lot of good information, a lot of good history about um, AKC show dogs and stuff like that. So I'm excited to film this episode and let you guys view it and see so let me turn my car off let's hop out ethan's out here waiting for me let's check it out what up e ethan grayville out here von woodruff's kennel he got um von woodruff's knockout aka layla she's out here yeah so once again this is going to be an influential episode right here rottweiler vlogs episode 106 um with your boys mizzle and mac mac is ahead right now he's he's he didn't take this trip but um i'm about to get busy with my man e i'm about to go behind the fence we're gonna sit by the pool we're gonna talk about some stuff and you guys check it out As a kid, we lived in Philadelphia, then North Boston. This is before Fall River. And we lived in pretty uh, tough neighborhoods. So, from the time I was born, my father always had Doberman Pinchers as a family guardian, a family dog, and also as a deterrent, you know, because we lived in rough neighborhoods. Our neighbors were getting robbed and stuff like that a lot. So my father didn't have a lot of money. He was putting himself through school, saved up a little money at and bought a Doberman. And then since then, we always had Dobermans when my parents split up. We always had Dobermans, so I've always been around Dobermans. When I was a kid, living outside of Fall River, a buddy of mine had a Rottweiler. I was probably about 13. And the first Rottweiler I met, when I first laid eyes on her, her name was Roxy, I remember. And I just fell in love with the breed then. Just with the temperament, with what a great family dog it was. He, he lived with his mother, a single mother. You know, in a pretty tough neighborhood also. So but that's how I got introduced to Rottweilers. And ever since then, I knew that was the breed for me, right? Mainly because of their temperament, their, their ability to be a family dog, uh, the things that you can do with them, the trainability, and then uh, then the looks of them. First Rottweiler I ever bought, I'm gonna be honest with you, I bought out of a newspaper. I think I paid like $200. I didn't know really anything, right? All I knew was I wanted a Rottweiler. I went and looked at him, he looked great to me. Ended up being a huge dog, 160 pound dog. And I thought he was the greatest raw I ever born back then, right? So I had him and then I bought another one from a, from a kennel. And I thought that she was a big step up, right? So I'm thinking in my head, oh, I got the, you know, the greatest raw I ever born and everything. And then when I lived in South Carolina, I saw, I think it was like an ad on TV or something for the dog show coming, the Greenville Spartanburg dog show. So I went to that. When I went to those dog shows, I realized real quick that my dogs weren't anything great like I thought they were, right? I was watching, uh, you know, the breed ring. And back then, there was a lot of dogs entered in dog shows. I'm talking 30, 40 in some classes, right? Nothing like it is now. It was a big entry. It was an all-day thing. Probably three hours to sat there and watch the Rottweiler breed ring. And then after that, I, uh, I realized I, I didn't... My dogs weren't great at all what I thought they were. You know, they were pets, right? In today's terms, they were pets. So I, I sit around and uh, watch the dog show, and this is kind of a funny story. I remember uh, Bob Busby, who's a really well-known judge and everything then, he was he was campaigning a dog named uh, Rampart's uh, King Ransom. Blackjack was his call name. So I was there with this girl, his girlfriend at the time, and we sat around and watched it. And the first two days I had seen Bob Busby, you know, just destroy and win every day, you know, dominant performance in there, right? So me and the girl, I said, I want to get a dog from him. You know, he, it wasn't his dog, he was a handler, but I'm, I didn't know anything down to that. He probably just a breeder, right? So we sit around, 
He won best of breed. I remember like it was yesterday. He went up, uh, took his, we were waiting to talk to him. He went up and took his breed picture. So finally, it's my chance, right? So I don't come and say, hey, how you doing? Uh, you got an awesome, awesome dog. Uh, great dog. I, I want to get a puppy out of him, right? You know, I was asking him this, and I remember like it was yesterday, and he's actually, he is one of my mentors and a really good friend of mine, but he looked at me and said in front of everybody, in front of the girl I was with, who are you? And what, what are you writing, a fucking book? So he said that to me, and I was just trying to be real uh, sincere and talk to him. You know, and I'm from... I'm from Fall River, right? So my blood started boiling. And my first reaction was, I'm gonna fight this guy right here, right? So there was a couple other people came and kind of got in the way and I had words with them. And long story short, I continued to go to dog shows and Bob Busby is one of my best friends. I've learned a lot from the breed from him and he really um, mentored me. But that was my first uh, interaction with meeting him. He's a, he's a really well-known judge right now and he's done some great things for the breed. Now the next big step is to get a show dog, right? So there was a lady there, I can't remember. Okay, I think she was there, Judy Johnson. Her and her husband, Bill, <coughs> ran a garage stock kennel. Garage stock kennel was a really well-known kennel back in the day in like the 60s and 70s, right? And uh, they had a dog named Garage Stock Pegasus. She had a lot of nice dogs back then. So when I met her, she was already really old, right? But the first couple show dogs I bought I got from her, and she actually lived maybe 30 minutes from here. She was from, I think, New York or something, but she moved here also. I think it was Chicago. She moved uh, down south also. So I started going to her kennel, right? She had a lot of dogs, like 15 dogs, but she was a lot older, wasn't in really good health. So she started mentoring me, and maybe mentoring me to also be an advantage to her for me to do the grunt work, right? I'd come over there and spray her kennels out, leash train a dog. Uh, her eyes were bad, so she taught me how to dock tails, do do claws and all that. So in the very, very beginning, learning pedigrees, how to read a pedigree, learning OFA, learning everything, I'd say she taught me a, a, a whole lot, right? And she had some really nice dogs back then. She had a dog named uh, Garage Stocks, Exciting Sergeant Pepper. He was a big, big, strong, strong AKC dog, right? A lot of type, a lot of head, a lot of bone, which, which personally, I like that, right? And we'll get into that a little bit later about the differences, what I think of AKC and then imports and all that, and all the imports you see now. But I learned a lot from her in the beginning, in the early 90s. So back in the 90s, a lot of the dogs back in the 90s came from imports, right? I remember Jay Beta, rest in peace, he had an awesome, awesome bitch named Abby Von Schwegerwappen. And when I saw Abby, that was really what made me think because I thought I knew a lot about show dogs, right? I said, that's a hell of a bitch. And she was an import, right? Came from a famous kennel uh, in Germany, Vom Schwegerwappen. That was a really important dog. And just real quick on imports, back in that time, and I see it a lot now, the temperament of an import wasn't like the temperament of an import that people are used to and getting today, right? The temperaments now are great for the most part. Back then the dogs were standoffish, kind of tough, right maybe not the best temperament that you want to breed you know the place half the litter is pets and family and all that and they kind of had that stigma back then because they were all just geared to work right that's where they came from germany they're working dogs high drive dogs right didn't make the best temperament and best pets back then not to what you see in imports now which i think have the best temperament in any rottweiler i've been around a lot of these serbian imports and stuff now the greatest rottweiler i ever saw and also i definitely think the most influential He's by far produced the most AKC champions in any dog. I believe it's around 169, 170 is Cahill. <coughs> to me, Cahill is the, the GOAT. And uh, I, I remember going to, the first time I saw him was at uh, MRC, the Medallion Rottweiler Club in uh, Chicago. I remember going to that show. And I, I know he, he, he won best in specialty show that show a few times, right? But I remember just watching him and like I said, back then there was tons of dogs. Huge entry, right? I don't remember, 300 or more probably, right? A big, big ring, a lot of spectators, a lot of energy in there. And I just remember watching that dog. <coughs> so obviously he always made it to the final cut, right? Showed perfectly. When it was down to the final cut, meaning the, the last 10 or whatever that the judge is gonna consider to win, you know, best of breed. He just hit another gear, right? And I remember watching that dog 
watching him go around the ring and he just floated, right? He just like he had another gear. He knew that everybody was watching him and clapping for him. And to me, it was, uh, so I get choked up thinking about him, but it was really uh, special to watch that. So to me, Cahill is definitely the most influent influential dog I ever saw a Rottweiler. That happened to be a Cahill daughter uh, bred by Susie at Camp Castle and the bitch's name was Trig. I believe this time was probably around the early 2000s. I think she was number one Rottweiler around maybe 2004 or 2005 around that time. But to me, she looked just like Cahill, right? Same ring presence, same structure, same thunder thigh rear, same floating movement, same iron board hard top line, same tail set. To me, she's definitely the best bitch that I ever saw in person. Cam Castle, when I first knew her, her name was Susie King, right? So she started out showing breeding dogs in the early 80s. I think she used to show her own dogs. And uh, nobody's bred more AKC champions than her. I believe she's bred over 180, maybe more. Uh, go down the list and list of top dogs, best in show winning Rottweilers, maybe nine or 10 different best in show winning Rottweilers she's bred. Probably a lot more than that. Best in specialty show winning Rottweilers, multiple top ARC top 20 winning dogs. To, to, to me, that's an easy question also, right? She's definitely the most influential and best breeder in AKC in, in my 30 years, in my time of being around, right? I, it's not even close in my opinion. Actually talking about Cahill and then uh, talking about Cam Castle, the current number one AKC show dog, AKC Rottweiler, and number 10, working group dog is Patton. He was bred by Susie. He's a Cam Castle uh, dog, double Cahill in the pedigree. And he's currently the number one Rottweiler this year in 2020, right? And like you said, it's been, dog shows have been hit or miss, right? They're not showing like they were, they're kind of picking up, but he still maintained that for pretty much the whole year. Owned by uh, Jerry and Sherry Roberts out in Indiana. Maybe going back a little bit to showing dogs and all that, my first really successful dog that I had, me and my father owned him, was a dog named Marcus. This is back probably 19, late 1990s, 1999. He was an American Canadian champion. And I got him off of my really good friends. They were the breeders of Steve and Lisa Holcroft. They're actually the breeders of, uh, the owners of Drogo right now, who I have a litter with out of my best bitch. I'll show you in a little bit, Layla. So, me and the whole cross go way back. So that dog made dog shows fun, right? Because it's a lot funner to go to a dog show when you have a competitive dog, a dog that can win. And back in that time, like I said, the classes were so huge. I can remember driving all the way to Florida or something like that. to be 30, you know, 25, 30, 40 dogs just in the class and just getting in a ribbon, right? Made it the trip. You were smiling the whole way you drove home, right? So back then, dog shows were a lot harder and a lot more entry and a lot more passion into it, I think back then. So Marcus was my first really good show dog. Uh, dog had an unbelievable structure, one of the greatest top lines I've ever seen on a dog. He was known for his top line. And so because of that and talking about Cahill and all that, I appreciate structure, right? I appreciate movement. I appreciate top line, tail set, uh, feet, stuff like that. And even today, a lot of that is what you'll get with a good AKC pedigree show dog, right? You'll get all that movement and structure, especially going back to dogs like Cahill and Jackie Payne's Rico and stuff like that, right? But to me, I also really, really like the breed type of an import, right? Imports give you a lot of stuff that a lot of the AKC dogs don't have, right? Bone, substance, uh, dark eyes and mouth, dark markings stronger head, stronger muzzle. So what I try to do here is I try to, you know, do the best of both worlds. Like say the Layla litter I have right now. To me, Layla's a really, really exceptional bitch. Uh, she's full Serbian. She's a Rex Timotor daughter, bred to my Azra. Uh, Azra was a Zamba daughter. And then you take a bitch like that and breed her to a dog like the whole cross Drogo, who's a Rico son, right? A pilot grandson, Kale in there. Reagan, you got multiple, multiple number one dogs in this pedigree. So you're trying to come come back and tighten up the imports, uh, structure and movement, all that, and then even bring out more of the breed type and stronger head and stronger bone to the AKC dog, right? So that's kind of what I try to do. 
is to try to combine them, you know, maybe the best of both worlds. You know, and then to talking about Cahill, he's been dead for, I guess, what, 11 or 12 years, produced a lot of champions, but he's still being bred. I have a Cahill puppy here now. Uh, my buddy in Hawaii just, just bred the Cahill, did a frozen breeding. He's really nice uh, AKC champion, international champion bitch. Uh, she should be around three or four weeks pregnant right now from Cahill. So even though he's been dead for a while, he still has a big influence, right? Obviously, all the dogs here, they're family dogs. They come in the house at night. I have, uh, I have a lot of dogs. But, uh, so it takes a lot of time, right, to do it right. And they're our pets first, they're our dogs first. And without a doubt, I couldn't do it without my wife, right? As far as rearing puppies or just training and stuff like that, you know, she's a full-time, she has a full-time job. She's a nurse, but she does, she does even more than me here. So I'm lucky to have her. Uh, my sons, my sons, they're in uh, middle school and high school. You know, that's their chores. They've been their chores until they little. They help out with the dogs and spend time with the dogs and you know, leash breaking puppies or bucket bitch duty. You know, cleaning the kennels out. They, they're a big part of it also. And then also my dad, right? Uh, my dad's been doing this with me from the beginning. He really uh, likes show, show dogs, and he's been a big part of this also, right? You know, going back to day one, if it was buying dogs or paying a lot of money to import these dogs or picking up the bills so we could all go to CRC or MRC and stuff like that, he's been a big part of it also.